So welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us again for a return to competition session. Tonight it is the turn of circuit. We've had our time trial and we've had our track session last week. Those are on our YouTube channel if you are interested to watch them back. So this session again, it will be recorded and put up on YouTube because there are quite a number of people that have commitments on a Monday night and can't join us that would have liked to. So just so you're aware, um, your lovely faces will go up on YouTube too. So I will just start sharing my screen. There we go. So tonight, um, sorry for those of you who've seen the first couple of slides before, but briefly talk about guidance, then training, Mark hopefully will be here to share his experience and then we'll go into breakout rooms to talk about some discussion points and then end with just some general questions and chat. We're scheduled for 60 minutes tonight so um, it might not take that long, it might take a little bit longer but after an hour I will not be offended if you need to leave. Um, if you have any technology problems don't worry just rejoin um, when you can and if you can't make it as I say it will be going up on YouTube and at the end of the chat um, we will put up the evaluation form for this session and that helps us learn and how we can run these sessions better for next time so it's greatly appreciated when you do fill those out. So get started. So our last guidance updates and um, big changes were at the end of last month, as we all know, we were so excited to find out that we could finally have competition back on and that we could also travel all around Scotland if we wanted to. And the other really important one I found was that we could have a maximum of 200 people involved in our events. So that's everybody from our riders to our volunteers and our officials. So that was quite a key number. As we go along, hopefully these will be updated again soon. Um, things like the max number of events, hopefully next time we hear it could be up at 500. That would be great to see that step. Any updates that come will go up on our website. They will go out on social media and on our events team newsletter. If you don't get that and you'd like to get the events team newsletter, please just ping me an email afterwards at the events at email address and I'll add you to that so you can receive that too. Training. The world of COVID has opened up the online world, so there are a lot more accessible options for people to do a bit of training in CPD. For officials, there's the webinars from UCI and British Cycling. British Cycling's next one is in June on safeguarding and well-being. On Friday, they also announced access to some online modules for regional B officials and everybody's going to have access to that and that would be used as a refresher but also to kind of test it and, and um, see how it works so that you know what the new people are going through too so that's very exciting. For event organisers we're trying to do some targeted webinars for you guys too. We had um, for example the rebuilding your volunteer workforce one recently and looking ahead we've got new organiser training later in the summer. And that's primarily aimed at people that are putting on their first events towards the end of the year and into 2022. And also a troubleshooting session for the events management system. It has its quirks and its interesting ways of working. So the idea is that you'll be able to hopefully drop into the troubleshooting session to do a focused area. Uh, for example, removing a rider or um, initiating an event, for example. Um, so sign up for that will open soon and we'll be advertising it in our next newsletter. And for general volunteers, it's really discipline dependent. And again, we advertise those opportunities in the newsletter. So without further ado, Mark has not made it tonight, unfortunately. So we will just have to skip over Mark. Let me uh, when we go into breakout rooms, I will check if I've had an email and if not, we'll just swap things around and Mark will go after. So I'm sorry about that. I'll just double check, not in the waiting room. Okay. Oh, straight to the wait, uh, straight to the breakout rooms then. So we've got- so, Sorry, Ashley, might I just briefly interrupt? Of course you can. 
think so. Um, I mean, I don't know if you uh, got any updates from British Cycling uh, or basically from down south last year when they were able to run closed circuit events while we were not able to run them at the same time in Scotland in terms of formats they used and how they tried to keep how to, they uh, try to keep sort of different races a part of of having typically these 15 15 minute long races but sort of having group a racing for 15 minutes then have group b racing for 15 minutes then have group a racing for 15 minutes again and then b racing again for 15 minutes but keeping them basically throughout the entire day that those groups a and b never mixed and they sort of that was certainly something i heard from from british cycling uh, as i yeah. said last so last year mark was going to talk a, a little bit about, and that's why mark was coming to share how they've done things in practice down south and then we can think about how we can apply them up here um different bubbles for people and and the flows and things for people uh riders at the events and the officials at the events how that'll work so hope i uh, um i'll ping mark an email and and see what's happening if not he i'll i'll see how he can get that information to us anyway but at, at the end we can have a general discussion about um that the flows and things because there's been good, good discussion in the other disciplines about how that would work like with a uh, track um, I think some of that will work very, very similarly. Um, so even if you watch, I don't know if you've watched the track one, but watching that one back might be quite interesting to see how they applied it as well. But, how, sorry, how many of us are there? I think we'll maybe re have to rejig our breakout rooms that we've got planned because not so many people have right i think we might just have to change it to two breakout rooms julie one two three four five yeah okay um, you could put well you can use your adjustment okay uh, so basically um we're gonna have the, the breakout rooms and just general areas to discuss. In previous sessions, we have given ideas about what you might want to discuss in the three parts of an event. Um, but I think it's better if you guys just talk about what concerns you have, what areas you think might be tricky that you want to talk through with people about how you can get them to work. So with pre-competition, it might be is it possible to have entry on the day? Is it is it not? Does that not work for your type of event? During competition, you might want to talk about something like if there's an accident at an event, what would your usual action be if there was an accident? What will it be with COVID can, uh, to take into consideration? And how are you going to manage the results? Or if somebody can test the results, how, how it, does that all work? with all these flows and bubbles and, and distancing. And post-competition again, it could be things about how, how are you gonna manage the, um, these people, how are the results gonna come out so they're not all crowded around a board getting the answers. Um, how do you consider your, how do you thank your volunteers when you've, you've really got to get them out of there pretty quickly? So it's such a broad, broad, broad topics we talked about, but I think being too, prescriptive is um hasn't worked as well so Henrik, yeah um just a question ashley from also your slides at the beginning i assume our discussions at the moment are focusing on youth races as for now in scotland i believe we are uh, supposed to only run time trial events for over 18s am i right with that assumption for now and um, you can talk about all age groups as you want and um, because gradually things are going to be moving forward hopefully and we'll be able to get more age groups involved um so 
we don't know how often we'll be able to have these return to competition things so it doesn't make really make sense to just restrict ourselves just to the younger age groups just talk about everything and anything you want to martin and i was just going to say we are, we are hoping that the guidance that comes out tomorrow will confirm that we'll be going into level two as of next monday which will allow us to run the senior events at Five Cycle Park starting on starting on the 20th of May. Okay, thank you, Martin. Yeah. Right, so we're gonna go into two breakout rooms and if one person would feed back for their room um, after 10 minutes, that would be fabulous. Um, Jan, do you want to feed back from your, your Martin's chat? <laughs> Oh, damn, I thought uh, Martin was going to do it. So um, as you all know, Martin is a very experienced organiser and he's organising uh, not only the Youth Omnium at uh, uh, Dundee Track, but also um, sessions at uh, Fife uh, Cycle Circuit. Uh, and he's well down the road of uh, organising events. And um, from a potential officials point of view it was very reassuring uh, to hear that he was thought about all the areas that I had concerns about or that you that had been suggested as to things we might discuss uh, so uh, thank you Martin for for doing that uh, so it's just and he also said that there's a lot of information from both Scottish cycling and British cycling to to help him with that he, he wasn't starting with a, a blank sheet of paper there's lots of guidance so that that's very useful so thank you uh, to all for that so it's just thinking about the flow of the competitors from when they arrive get their race bag get get to the race do the race then they leave and how they get the results and we chatted about each of those bits very shortly but Martin's got it, got it covered uh, as far as I can see. Uh, I asked questions uh, about, you know, how do they get their race pack? Yeah, he's got the answer. Uh, what happens with the results? It's all going to be online. If they want to contest the results, it's online. So he had all the answers to the questions that I had. And as I say, that's very reassuring as a potential official. Uh, one thing he did uh, tell us about was um, because people haven't been racing for so long, maybe moving the start so that they've got a longer straight before the first uh, corner so that that will you know, get a little bit of separation. So we don't have however many people, 30 or whatever it is, trying to get around that corner at, after, you know, in their very first race after such a long layoff but that will stretch them out a bit. I think, yeah, just shows his forward thinking. So great idea. Great, thank you very much, Jan. Um, who'd like to feed back from the other room? Or am I gonna volunteer tell somebody? <laughs> Henrik, I know you can talk. Yeah, but it depends on how brief you want it. That's um, true. Uh, well, actually, uh, we were just about to, after some brief introductions, we wanted to start with a with a pre-competition part, and then we were thankfully joined by by Mark, who who gave us a very good rundown of of how things happen down uh, or have happened so far down in England. Um, probably some of many of the things that uh, Martin is considering already in in terms of indeed issuing race packs uh, potentially already at the car park the organizer or obviously a volunteer on behalf of the organizer ticking riders off so that it's clear who who is turned up as you don't really use the uh, a sign on sheet where where riders actually uh, physically sign on where there was a bit of discussion about uh, licenses and memberships and how organizers can can check pre-event uh, what membership or, or, or the race license uh, um, the riders who have entered have. So that potential 
additional five or ten pounds for uh, a day licenses can that that can be addressed in advance rather than than on the day um, and uh, sort of we talked a bit about warm up and how to get the riders to the line um, and we didn't get to the post competition part of results but uh, Mark can probably fill us fill us all in on. Uh, on that. <clears throat> yeah, well, Mark, um, you can start now, or um, I was going to say I can give you a wee intro, and and you can <laughs> you can chat for those of the, the a don't wee know intro. Him. A wee yeah. intro. All right, <laughs> those of you who don't know, him, Mark on. is one of the REOs from our British cycling counterparts. He covers the central region. And Mark wears many, many hats. He's he's a staff member, but he's also an official and involved in organizing and volunteering. So he, he can really share a lot of the different aspects of the closed circuits that he's been involved in during these strange times. Yeah, I can do. So uh, evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you that weren't on my room. So uh, it sounds really... Um, hard to put an event on and I know I've got still got event organizers in my own region and in England that are really wary as to what they're going to do but to be honest it's not as difficult as we, as we think in fact some of the stuff we've learned by having to really look at how we deliver cycling events in COVID we're going to roll forward um, so we started last August when we first uh, were allowed to put events on and we were running 15 minutes, 15 riders in a race. Yeah, everybody would go, nobody would turn up for that. Nobody would come for a 15 minute race. They filled that, that wasn't a problem, yeah. And what we did was we, we put on two groups, yeah, of riders, different categories and one raced and then they went and stayed in their own bubble or we put them somewhere. And then another group came onto the track and then they raced for 15 minutes and they went off and then stayed in their bubble. And then we got the first group back on, they raced again um, and then vice versa. Once they'd all finish, once they finished their group, they then disperse. So um, this year, uh, after the March, we were allowed to do 30 riders, 30 minutes, and that's what we've been doing. So we've been running, um, Evening league races started in England on the day after the 12th of April, so 13th of April. And we've had uh, two or three races running um, on various circuits. So some, some of our circuits, if the risk assessments allow, allow concurrent racing and others are single race. So the fourth cat races that we've got entry level, it's a 30 minute race on its own, nobody else on the, on the circuit. They stay in there, they come, they register. So the flow, as, as Jan mentioned earlier, is crucial. So as we were saying in the other room, it's all pre-entry. So make sure, don't want anybody coming on the day that shouldn't be there. No money taken on the day. It's all done. It's all done using our EMS system. Um, they turn up. We don't have, at one of the facilities, don't have the ability because of car parking issues don't have the ability to, as they come in, as somebody stood on the car park, ticking the rider's names off and then giving them through the window a rider pack. Yeah, but if you did have space for that, that's a really good way of doing it. So Felix in the South region has done that at a couple of his venues. Um, so you just go, I'm, I'm Joe Bloggs, number 20. Yeah, you tick them off, give them the pack. They then go, they pin the number on, uh, they get ready for their event. They then allow the warm up onto the circuit, um, and then they, they they ride around. We we don't want them there. So we have a race that starts at six thirty, and one starts at seven fifteen. So the six thirty event, we don't want them coming before six o'clock. Um, and so they have very small. They don't have much time to do much else apart from do what we want them to do. Yeah, which is come register. Uh, then they join, they join the commissaire then stops them, they join, they join the start, they get on the start line, we socially distance them, meet them a half apart, yeah, on the front row, 
and then everybody lines up behind them. A bit like you would do a, a CX or an MTV gridding, but they're not gridding. Yeah, it's whoever first come, first serve. Not had any issues about people arguing, oh, I'm not on the front line. It's in a half hour race, for goodness sake. Yeah, it's not a big issue. Um, then they, they, they do their race, they finish. They don't come and ask where they finished at the end. If they think that they were in the top three places, one organizer gives top three prizes. They go and see the organizer. We have a photo finish camera operator that just texts the, text the result down to the organizer and he gives them a prize. That's it. So that's, that's the, the, I suppose, the third, a few things that we need, other things we need to go over. So I don't know how it's going to work in Scotland, actually, but buildings are not open currently. They may be after next Monday. Yeah, so the only rate, the only way we can get a building open is for toilets and first aid. And they run on a strict one-way system. So we have a, we open, on one of the buildings, we open a fire exit door, and that's the entrance. Then they walk through the, through the building, go use the toilet, and then they come out via the front door. Yeah, and it's a one-way system. And it, it works well. Um, and then the, what's the other thing? Um, and we have a registration desk is outside for where we can't do the car park tick off. We just have a registration desk with the rider packs on that. And the riders come to the desk, uh, sees the registration, registration clerks, and then they do the same thing. Just give them the rider pack and then they go away. The, the issue we currently are having is because everybody's been locked up for months and months and months and months and months and not seen anybody, they do the event and then you just stop and they all want to chat. Yeah. And you just have to sort of be quite strict with them and just like, uh, come on, move on. Yeah. Just clear off. Not that we don't want you or love you, but please go. Yeah. And I've moved the same group of people three times in, in, uh, last week. And I, I'm not going to tell you again. Yeah. But please just go home. Yeah. yeah. Community is such a big thing with cycling that yeah, you're right. After not yeah. seeing everybody, you're just yeah, you're being kind, but yes, please, please go. <laughs> yeah, just please go. Please go. So and that and that's that's really it, people. It's not it's not been a big thing. I mean, we've had for closed circuit, it's because we got the smaller numbers. So we've got a really big issue next week, right, in England, because 17th of May is when we're meant to be relaxation of everything, yeah, and we can go to the next stage, which is unlimited field sizes and the returning of ranking points. So we have events on the 18th of May currently listed at the moment with 150 riders in it, where at the moment we've got 30 riders in, in the field sizes. So we're going to, we're, we're rejigging the whole program to put on where we can just extend the evening and try and get bigger fields. But we're just hoping that we get the ticket in the box that this can happen. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of unhappy people next week mm -hmm. not getting a ride. Um, but yeah. What about it, from an, an official's point of view, Mark? Is there anything that you've. you've right. So there is, an, there is an issue. Well, officials currently, we, we normally on our circuit basis, depending where they are in the region, and I think it works the same in other regions. We tend to have a pool of people that just rotate. So they get the event once every six weeks. And they just, because our leagues run for like, some of our leagues are running 12 weeks, some are running 20, 25 weeks. It just depends on where they are. Yeah. So we just have a pool of people that are happy to go there one night a week every six weeks. And we have the same pool of people that do that. We have, um, a few officials that didn't want to come and volunteer on anything yet until they had their two jabs. Um, and that's gradually now rolling out because they've had them. So in effect, the officials and the event organizers that we've got tend to be of an age where they will have had their two jabs and it's the riders that aren't having any jab. Yeah. So uh, that has been an issue actually, but, we're getting around it, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about things 
I, it was brought up in the track last week that, you know, that having to be very aware as an official of things like if there was a crash, they'd usually just pick up um, pick up the bike to get it out the way of the track and out the way. Is there, is there any things like that that you, you've had to stop and think about how, how, how's that actually going to work safely? Um, on the spot of it. Yeah, to be honest, the, the, the crashes that we've had, and we have had some in the entry level races, full scat races, week one and week two, week three and four have been good, no crashes. Yeah. Um, first aider or the first aid provider, they, they, they are their own COVID protocols to keep to. So they go to the incident or went to the incident. To be honest, at the time, I couldn't see from where I was what happened with the bikes. So I would imagine they just got moved yeah, out of the way. The race carried on. It didn't get stopped. I didn't need to stop the event. Yeah. Um, they were minor, you know, rider hit somebody else, came off, minor cuts and minor cuts and grazes that, that got dealt with by the first aider. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it is... The one thing we're looking at is the protocols with the uh, handheld radios that we use. Um, so they are they are uh, wiped down prior to the giving to the marshal. The event marshal keeps their own uh, high vis, yeah, and washes it themselves. Um, and then the the handhelds are put back into the uh, room where we keep them. And if there's no events between then and the following week, then nothing's done with those again, because it's going to be longer than 72 hours. And then the same process happens the next week with a wipe down before they get given to the wife, uh, to the marshal mm -hmm. yeah, or the commissary. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm sure people in the room probably have questions. Um, does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask or put it in the chat and I can read it out? Go ahead, Martin. Well, just a quick question. For, uh, we're very, we've got events starting shortly. I'm helping clubs put on events shortly and following very much what you've done. And I'd, I'd be concerned if we weren't. As far as rider packs are concerned, if a rider says, I'm with Joe Bloggs, have they been allowed to take Joe Bloggs' rider pack or do you want to see Joe Bloggs on site? Yeah, we need to know he's there. Okay. Yeah, has to be. Uh, we don't, I mean, the only, yeah, we haven't done, even for the youngsters, yeah, we we still want to know that they're there and they're actually there and it's not just relying on somebody or a friend of a friend saying, oh, I'll take his rider pack, yeah. It's not, we needed to see it. Okay. Because we're not checking, we're not checking anything else apart from physically knowing they're there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw Henrik put his arm up, and then Zosha put her hands up too. Henrik first. Um, yeah, Mark, uh, you thank you. Uh, you uh, talked about obviously the evening uh, races, and of course you start at six thirty, and well, you know, as we know at the moment, eight thirty. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe up here in Scotland, we are a bit more lucky. Nine o'clock, uh, uh, you you have to wrap things up. Um, did you run any races on a on a Saturday or Sunday yet, yeah. where you where you would have had put? Did you were you then able to run more than two groups? Let's say four four different races of thirty or something like that. Yeah. So what we did on the weekends, Henry, was we ran totally separate races. Yeah. We ran, we ran on one, one event where I was at the other week, they had nine races. Yeah. So they started, they started at 10 in the morning and finished at, I don't know, four in the afternoon, something like that. Yeah. So they had a break and it just went, it was a whole day of racing. Yeah. So it went from under eight through to uh, senior men, senior women, juniors, yeah, the whole the whole shebang really. Yeah, different categories, different classes. Yeah, apart from they didn't run it, they didn't run an elite or first cat event, but they ran. But the longer you've got, the more easy it is to do because you can just separate the races out. You don't need to try and push it all in to a smaller time. Thanks, Mark. Um, Zosha. 
I've got to wait for Doug to unmute me um, <laughs> and this tiny wee head over here. Um, I just want to ask about race numbers. I'm assuming that they are disposable and not returnable. We've used both. We've used both. Yeah, so our league races, which tend to be evening races, are disposable ones. Yeah. Um, but they are like the Tyvex type of uh, material. So what we tend to do is we buy them, they were bought for the whole season, the rider keeps them, and if they end up that they can't use them after so many weeks, then we give them a new one. But they keep their own number for the whole year, yeah? Uh, and then we had used, uh, I was at an event the other week where the club, the organising club, new organiser, older club, um, had time trial numbers and only had one number per rider where we want two. Um, so we, we loaned them some, some vinyl numbers and then cleaned them afterwards, wiped down. So just like putting them in a, in a box? Kind of yeah. Thing. yeah, just have a big box at the end and they just came back and threw them in a box and then it was down to the event organiser and myself to sort them out. Um, I wouldn't mind, I've got another question. I'm guessing from, from what you were saying with like finish line, photo finish, that type of thing, there's no chip timing. That's not something that we're contemplating using in Scotland at Martin and Robbie's events, no? I don't know, maybe Martin's better place to answer that, but that's how we've usually done it at Five Cycle Park, isn't it? It's always been chip timing. It will be chip timing. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's important then for you to make sure that you get those back. Yes, yes. People are dreadful at going away with those, aren't they? Not usually, you get the odd one, but usually most people are smart enough to take them off at the end. Okay. So, so the, uh, the event that we ran the other Saturday where it had nine races, yeah, we had that with chip timing. Mm -hmm. So a number of the riders that go there regularly have their own chip, yeah, and others don't, so they were issued with the chip. Right. Yeah? So, and then at the end of it, they just threw them in. Basically, as they came off, the best way of doing it, it was mm -hmm. quite nice. They funneled yeah, get the riders, it. they funneled the riders into it before the exit. Yeah. And then they just took everybody's, they took everybody's chip off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I was just going to mention that in one of the other groups, um, the time trial one, actually, there was different approaches to the numbers. Um, most of them were going to use numbers and collect them back in at the end. And some of them were just going to have a box where all the numbers went in. The box would go away into the cupboard and not be used again until whenever, if they had a couple of time trials in that week, then they just had basically two sets of numbers that they'd rotate around keeping the box. Somebody was also going to have the, the a bucket with disinfectant right there. So as soon as they get in, it goes in the disinfectant, mm -hmm. goes in the back of the car and gets taken home to deal with. So there's there's definitely options depending on, on what time you have and, and uh, what budget you have as well, I suppose. Yeah, that worked. Um, Jan, I see in the chat you put about, does every rider only get one race? In the midweek races they do. The weekend, the other week I was at, the organizer gave the cat twos and threes two races. Yeah, but he interspersed that with a interspersed that with a with a women's race. So it went fourth cat, second and third race one, women's race, second and third cat race two. And he just ran it the other way around. So he did one anti-clockwise and one clockwise. Henry, you're muted. Um in terms of uh, officials, uh you are typically, I assume, running those with uh, with two commissaires, chief, chief, and commissaire two. Yeah, yeah. So a no, chief, you're not no, tra no tra at this moment in time, Henry. We've not put any trainees on any of these events. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's only it's only it's only commissaires that we we know and have used in the past that are able to do it. As we as we get past June twenty first, I think the date. Yeah, then we start to reintroduce our trainees to the yeah. uh, to the to the whole process. Okay. Yeah. Aaron, you've been pretty quiet. Are you quite happy? Yeah. No, I don't have any questions. I'm just sitting and listening to the to you guys. You guys are more experienced at this sort of stuff, so. Just absorbing. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, well, mm -hmm. we've, we've got four minutes. So are any more questions or are we quite happy at the moment and want to sleep on it? Looks like we're quite happy. Oh, no, Jan's raised her hand as well. Uh, just a comment about the commissaires, and I made the same comment last week with the track. Uh, you know, I'm desperate to get back out there. I know that I need that experience because you know it's been a long time. But with only two commissaires per event, it's going to be a while before I get back into it. I fully appreciate that, uh, but it, for me personally, it's a concern. You know, it's been a long time since I've been out in grey and now it's going to be even longer and uh, it's not going to put me off and everyone's got to be treated fairly but you know, I know that you're aware of that that it is a concern. Yeah it's a gradual return hopefully as the government announces new things and, and the numbers that can go to events that extend we'll gradually be able to get more qualified people along as, as long as that's what's needed at that event. So might seem like you're waking up a long time, but it might only be a month, it might only be two months. You might be appointed to something on June the 1st, you know? So it's difficult, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. The confidence will come back as, as we get going again. Can and I it's happening just, to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's not can I different. just, yeah, if I can just chip in on that, uh, I think Jan, that really applies to, to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a regional commissaire or an elite national commissaire, I have done my last race in August, sorry, September 2019. And coincidentally, that was at the World Championships. Um, but uh, since then, I haven't seen a, a bike race either. And actually every season, uh, you may not know that, but almost all of us, Tom Forbes, Kevin Sturgeon, myself, we will always make sure that we get out to do a regional race in March before we get to our first national races, potentially in April or in May, because we all get rusty and we all have that. So yeah, please, I mean, of course we need to be aware of that. We need to maybe read up on some things and I will do that as well before my first race. But um, yeah, I would certainly say, please, please don't put it off um and there will be two commissaires so there is a team you're not out there on your own and uh, uh with martin there is an experienced organizer at hand as well so yeah take the plunge the 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 the, the good thing about what we found here is that the everybody's just so keen to get back into doing activity yeah they listen to whatever we're saying this time around. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's really good because before they wouldn't take, you know, you have people at the back of the, back of the pack just talking to themselves, you know, not listening to what the conversation is saying. And the other I good thing... I don't know thing, what you mean, Mark. That never happened. No, no, sure not. And the only other thing was that the day where we ran the youth racing, the best thing that the event organiser did, who was the parents, was they penned them. Yeah, they put them in a pen. And it's a bit like, you can't come out of that. That's where you're going to be. Yeah, they couldn't get anywhere near the start line. Um, and it worked really well. I think it's something we need to think about keeping. I was going to say, is that one of your things that's going to yes, be... One of your things. End? And the other one is, the, especially for the entry-level racing, is to keep, the, to keep the races short. Yeah? Keep the races short because the people coming into the sport uh, that we've seen, and I had three ladies last week, who'd never, ever raced, never even thought about racing until they'd ridden Zwift over the winter, yeah? One lady hadn't even put, hadn't even ridden a bike on the road for two years and came to her first race last week. I was like, oh, my God. But actually, it was great because they just enjoyed what they were, they were there for, yeah? And that was the, the activity. Uh, and as you say, you know, all right. A lot of smiles by the end of it, I imagine. Yeah. So um, the only other one, actually, I maybe we need to take it offline, but did you get the emails from Reese about the refresher train? Yes, I mentioned that at the start to everybody. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. And don't, don't get hit up. I've had a load of commissaires coming up, but I'm a regional A commissaire, even though it's, it's pushed towards regional B. It doesn't matter. It's just about doing a refresher. Yeah. 
uh, mark those uh, those uh, that announcement went went out to to all the official all the British cycling officials, irrespective of. Uh, yeah. Being down south okay. or up here in Scot uh, up here in Scotland, so we all got that email uh, as okay. well. Yeah. yeah, that's good. No worries. And I think that's it, Ashley. Yeah. Well, if everybody's happy, that is eight thirty-one. We've gone one minute over. I do apologise. So, if there's no other questions, and if you're happy for the moment, we will end that for the night, and you can enjoy the rest of your evening. Um.